The story of Dr. Sam Duball, a man whose disappearance in the wilds of Mount Rainier National Park has left a void in the hearts of those who knew him and a puzzle for those drawn to the mysteries of our natural world. Dr. Sam Duball was not just like any other hiker lost to the unpredictable whims of nature. He was a beacon of intellect and passion, a 33-year-old assistant professor at the University of Washington. His life was a testament to the pursuit of knowledge and the exploration of the vast, untamed wilderness. Sam's love for the outdoors was matched only by his academic rigor. A seasoned traveler, he had ventured through the rugged terrains of the Himalayas, where the earth touches the sky, seeking not just adventure, but a deeper connection with the world around him. But who was Dr. Sam Duball beyond the headlines in the search reports? Born with a thirst for understanding the human condition, Sam embarked on an educational journey that saw him graduating from Stanford, immersing himself in the rigorous medical curriculum at Harvard Medical School, and ultimately earning a PhD in medical anthropology from UC Berkeley. His academic pursuits were driven by a profound desire to unravel the complexities of humanity, to explore what binds us in our shared experience and what divides us in our individual struggles. Sam's work and research took him to the heart of Uganda, where he focused on the Lord's Resistance Army, a group as controversial as it is misunderstood. It was here, amidst the backdrop of conflict and resilience, that Sam found the inspiration for his book, Against Humanity, Lessons from the Lord's Resistance Army. This was not just another academic adventure. It was a bold critique of the very concept of humanity, challenging the foundation of human rights and humanitarian missions. Through his writing, Sam sought to illuminate the shadows of the human experience, to question the constructs that define our understanding of good and evil, right and wrong. His journey was not solely about exploring the external landscapes of our planet or the societal structures of distant cultures. It was about an inward quest, a relentless search for truth and meaning in a world that often seems devoid of both. Sam's work bridged the gap between the academic and the personal, inviting us to ponder the essence of our being and the paths we chose to navigate through the journey of life. As we explore the mystery of Dr. Sam Duball's disappearance, we are reminded of the fragility of human existence and the indomitable spirit of those who dare to question, to seek, and to dream. Sam's story is a reflection of our innate desire to connect with the world beyond the confines of our immediate reality, to venture into the unknown in pursuit of something greater than ourselves. In the silence of the mountains, where Dr. Duball walked, there echoes a call to each of us, a call to explore, to understand, and to cherish the profound mysteries of our universe. In a chapter that would introduce an unwelcome twist in the narrative of Dr. Sam Duball's life, October 9th of 2020 dawned with the promise of adventure. On this day, Sam embarked on what was to be a solitary journey through the serene landscape of Mount Rainier National Park, choosing the Mother Mountain Loop Trail as his path for exploration. The allure of the trail, with its breathtaking vistas and the tranquil solitude it offered, was irresistible to a soul as adventurous as Sam's. With his preparations complete and his spirits high, he set off into the heart of the wilderness, expected to return by the following day, October 10th. However, as the hours turned into days, an unsettling silence took hold. The man who had ventured into the embrace of nature did not return as anticipated. On the day of his departure, fellow hikers and nature enthusiasts reported spotting Sam near Lake Mowich, an area known for its stunning beauty and peaceful surroundings. This sighting would later mark the last known point of his presence in the vast expanse of the park. The realization that Sam had not returned on schedule prompted concern and action. By October 12th, with no word from Sam and no sign of his return, the alarming reality set in. He was missing. The absence of communication from him, a hiker, both experienced and well-prepared, ignited a flurry of worry among his family, friends, and the hiking community. The news of his disappearance spread rapidly, casting a shadow over the natural splendor of Mount Rainier. As the search for Sam Duball began, 
So too did a chapter filled with uncertainty, hope, and the collective desire of a community seeking to find one of their own. In response to Sam Duball's disappearance, a concerted and extensive search operation was swiftly launched by the Mount Rainier National Park Service, drawing upon the dedication and expertise of both park rangers and a brigade of volunteers. This united effort saw the wilderness combed with meticulous care, as search teams navigated the rugged and diverse terrain of the park with the singular aim of locating Sam. Despite Sam's thorough preparation for his journey, which included a range of equipment designed to ensure his safety and comfort in the wilderness, the search yielded little in the way of clues. The discovery of a water bottle near the loop trail stood as the lone tangible link to Sam's path through the expansive natural landscape. This finding, though significant, did not lead to the breakthrough that the search teams and Sam's loved ones had hoped for. As the days passed, the operation faced mounting challenges. The weather, always a force in the high mountains, turned against the search efforts. Poor conditions hampered the ability of the teams to cover ground and thoroughly search potential areas where Sam might have been. Visibility was reduced, paths became treacherous, and the inherent risks of mountain search and rescue operations were magnified under such adverse weather conditions. With each passing day, Hope waned as the elements continued to obstruct the search. After several days of relentless effort, faced with the daunting reality of the situation and the unforgiving nature of the environment, the decision was made to suspend the operation. Sam was presumed dead, leaving a void in the hearts of those who knew him and a lingering question in the minds of those involved in the search. The decision marked a sad moment a pause in the physical search, but not an end to a quest for understanding as to what happened to Dr. Sam Duball on his hike in Mount Rainier National Park. Mount Rainier is a towering figure in the landscape of the Pacific Northwest. It stands as a sentinel over the surrounding terrain. This majestic peak, reaching an elevation of 14,411 feet, is not only the highest mountain in the state of Washington, but also one of the most iconic features of the Cascade Range. Beneath its serene appearance, however, lies the heart of an active volcano. Its potential for eruption places it among the most dangerous volcanoes in the world, a stark reminder of the raw power of nature. Over the years, Mount Rainier has witnessed its share of hiking accidents, each a testament to the mountain's unpredictable and perilous nature. Despite these dangers, or perhaps because of them, the mountain continues to draw adventurers and nature lovers to its slopes, each seeking to experience the awe-inspiring beauty and the thrill of the ascent. Nestled within this rugged and breathtaking landscape is the Mother Mountain Loop Trail, a journey through some of the park's most stunning and diverse terrains. The trail offers a glimpse into the heart of Mount Rainier National Park, winding its way through lush forests, alpine meadows, and past tranquil lakes. Starting from the Mowich Lake campground, the trail invites hikers to embark on a journey that is as beautiful as it is challenging. The route leads adventurers past the southeast side of Moak Lake, through the Knapsack Pass, and into the expansive beauty of Spray Park and Mist Park, areas renowned for their wildflowers and scenic vistas. Despite the inherent risks associated with any hike in such a rugged environment, the Mother Mountain Loop Trail is known for its relative safety, provided hikers are prepared and respect the mountain's conditions. The trail's design and the park's management have worked in tandem to create a route that, while challenging, avoids the most perilous aspects of mountain hiking. Yet, as with any wilderness expedition, the beauty of the trail is matched by the respect it demands for the natural forces that shape it. The legacy of Dr. Sam Duball extends far beyond the echoes of his footsteps on the Mother Mountain Loop Trail. His profound contributions to the fields of anthropology and medicine have left an indelible mark on the academic world and beyond. Sam was at the forefront of creating radical medicine, a pioneering field that sought to reimagine the practice of medicine through a lens of social justice and anti-racism. His vision for the healthcare system that not only heals but also addresses the root cause of inequality is a testament to his deep commitment to creating a better world.
Sam's personal impact resonates through the heartfelt tributes from his family, colleagues, and the broad academic community. They speak of a man with an unwavering moral compass, whose life was dedicated to the pursuit of justice and the dismantling of racism within the medical field and society at large. His work, characterized by courage and unyielding dedication to his principles, continues to inspire those who were fortunate enough to know him and those who encounter his legacy. The mystery surrounding Sam Duball's disappearance has galvanized a community united in their desire for answers. Despite extensive search efforts and a petition by Sam's family urging the continuation of the search, no further evidence of his whereabouts has been uncovered. This has led to theories and eyewitness accounts speculating on the circumstances that may have led to his disappearance. Some hikers who have traversed the same trail ponder the possibility that Sam may have deviated from his intended path, leading to an unforeseen accident. The absence of concrete evidence only deepens the mystery and fuels the discussion about what could have transpired in the vast wilderness of Mount Rainier National Park. The impact of Sam's disappearance reverberates through his family, colleagues, and the wider community, leaving a void filled with memories of his passion, kindness, and the relentless quest for justice. The unresolved nature of his disappearance continues to be a source of pain and uncertainty, yet it also serves as a beacon of hope. Hope that one day, the answers that are sought will be found, bringing closure to those who loved him. Sam's story highlights the broader issue of missing persons in national parks and the inherent challenges faced by search and rescue operations. It underscores the need for continued awareness, preparedness, and resources to ensure the safety of those who venture into the wild. As we reflect on the legacy of Dr. Sam Duval and the ongoing mystery of his disappearance, we are reminded of the fragility of life, the strength of the human spirit, and the enduring hope for answers in the face of uncertainty. Stuart Isaac, a 48-year-old man, found himself ensnared in a mystery that would perplex and intrigue many. On September 24, 2010, he vanished into the vast wilderness of Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, leaving behind nothing but whispers of his presence and a puzzle that begged to be solved. The disappearance was the culmination of a journey that had commenced 18 days prior on a seemingly ordinary day in Burtonsville, Maryland. Isaac had left a cryptic note for his family, a simple message that cloaked his true intentions in ambiguity. He announced he was setting out on a cross-country trip. This statement baffled everyone close to him, and it raised more questions than it answered. With the note as his only goodbye, he departed in his black 2009 Lexus IS250 westward, embarking on a 32-hour drive that would lead him straight into the heart of America's most beloved and mysterious national park. Was it a quest for solitude, an escape from the unseen burdens that life could no longer contain, or perhaps Yellowstone, with its geothermal marvels and untamed landscapes, had whispered his name? promising answers to questions he hadn't yet formed. The park, a vast expanse of natural beauty, has been known to both reveal and conceal secrets deep within its forests, gushing geysers, and expansive valleys. Into this wilderness, Isaac disappeared, leaving behind the world he knew for reasons as mysterious as the land that swallowed him. His journey to Yellowstone was not just a trip, it was a voyage into the unknown, a pilgrimage towards something that perhaps even he couldn't fully articulate. As the wheels of the black Lexus turned, mile after mile, Isaac moved closer to his disappearance, to a fate that would become a story of questions, theories, and searches. The note he left, brief and to the point, hinted at a journey, but revealed nothing of the shadows that might have danced at its edges. It was a prelude to a story that would unfold in the vast wilderness of Wyoming, a narrative punctuated by the mysterious silence of his absence. Isaac's disappearance into Yellowstone was not just a missing persons case, it was a story that captured the imagination, a puzzle that lay hidden beneath the canopy of one of the most mysterious places on earth. On the morning of September 26th of 2010, with the vistas of Yellowstone National Park as a witness, an unsettling discovery was made at Craig Pass, a secluded spot 
far removed from the well-trodden hiking trails. There, Stuart Isaac's black 2009 Lexus IS250 sat abandoned, a silent scene against the wilderness. The doors were unlocked with the keys resting inside as if awaiting his return. This discovery set off a flurry of activity as the National Park Service launched a comprehensive search from both the skies and on the ground. Helicopters sliced through the air while search teams combed the underbrush, each step an effort to pierce the veil of mystery surrounding Isaac's disappearance. Craig Pass, known for its remote beauty and lack of trails, became the epicenter of a growing storm of questions and theories. Why was the car left in such a state, unlocked and ready, as though Isaac had stepped out for a moment, intending to return? The presence of his keys inside suggested a sudden departure, a moment of crisis, or a decision that pulled him away from the safety of his vehicle. This place, far from the past frequented by tourists and hikers alike, hinted at a desire for solitude, or perhaps an escape. The efforts of the National Park Service to find Isaac were met with silence. The park, vast and indifferent, gave up no clues, and Isaac remained missing. The search efforts, extensive and thorough, gradually wound down, leaving behind a haunting absence where a man once stood. The absence became a space filled with speculation, a narrative incomplete and waiting for an ending that had still not been written. Stuart Isaac's venture into the untamed heart of Yellowstone, despite his lack of experience as a hiker or outdoorsman, weaves an even more intricate web of mystery around his disappearance. This detail paints a portrait of a man stepping far outside his comfort zone, propelled by motives that remain shrouded in the unknown. His last communication, a lengthy phone call to Matsu Evans, an old friend from high school residing in Guam, adds layer and depth to the complexity of this case. This call, made just two days before his vehicle would be found abandoned, was out of character for Isaac, who typically leaned on the immediacy of texts and emails to bridge the vast time zones between them. During this unusually long conversation, which was approximately two hours in length, Isaac revealed his imminent arrival at Yellowstone, a revelation that, in hindsight, casts a haunting shadow over their dialogue. The departure from their usual modes of communication suggests a profound need for connection, a desire to share or unburden before stepping into the vastness of the park. It hints at the weight of his journey, a prelude to his disappearance that was perhaps heavier with meaning than even Isaac could have articulated at the time. This final act of reaching out, choosing a voice call over the detached brevity of texts, feels like a bridge across the silence that would soon surround his story. This detail of Isaac's story, a man not versed in the wild, yet drawn to one of the most wild places on earth, coupled with his final, out-of-character communication, threads complex questions and contemplations, leaving those who hear his story to wonder about the thoughts and emotions that propelled him into the heart of Yellowstone. Classified as lost, injured, and or missing, his story hovers on the edge of public consciousness, scarcely touched by the media spotlight or societal discourse. Isaac, a man whose heritage hails from the Pacific Islands, embodied a blend of characteristics not commonly woven into the fabric of such mysteries. With his dark hair, deep brown eyes, and a stature of approximately 5 foot 9 inches tall and weighing around 220 pounds, he was not the typical figure one imagines of disappearing into the wilderness. The tattoos adorning his right tricep and each shoulder blade, perhaps markers of personal stories or cultural heritage, and the possibility of a mustache on his face add layers to his appearance and identity. The silence surrounding his disappearance and the lingering absence of awareness cast a shadow over his narrative. It's as if Isaac, with his distinct appearance and untold stories inked onto his skin, stepped into a realm beyond the ordinary into a narrative punctuated by the mysteries of nature itself. The lack of understanding about his motives for entering Yellowstone, a land of geothermal wonders and wild, untouched beauty, only deepens the intrigue and mystery. What drove a man, seemingly out of his element in the rugged outdoors, to seek something in the wilderness? Was it a quest for solitude, an escape, or a journey towards something undefinable? 
Isaac's story is a reminder of the many faces that disappear into the unknown, leaving questions behind that echo in the absence of answers. It speaks to the heart of human curiosity and the innate desire to understand why. Why did he go? What was he seeking? And ultimately, where has he gone? In the vast expanse of Yellowstone, amid its beauties and dangers, the story of Stuart Isaac remains a puzzle, a narrative suspended in the silence of the wild, waiting for a voice to bring it back into the light. In the autumn of 1981, the Great Smoky Mountains wore a majestic cloak of reds, oranges, and yellows, painting a breathtaking canvas that attracts nature lovers from far and wide. Nestled in the heart of this natural splendor lies the Deep Creek Campground, a haven for those seeking the serene embrace of nature and the simple joys of outdoor life. It is here, amidst the whispering trees and meandering trails, that Thelma Pauline Melton, or Polly, and her husband, Bob Melton, find their seasonal retreat, escaping the hustle of the everyday to bask in the tranquil beauty of the fall months. Polly, rarely known by her given name, Thelma, carries life stories woven with threads of joy, hardship, and adventure. Married to Bob, a man 20 years her senior, their union marks Polly's third attempt at matrimonial bliss. Yet, it is with Bob that Polly seems to have found a true partner, with whom she shared not just her love, but a jest for the nomadic lifestyle that sees them living out of an Airstream trailer. This portable home on wheels symbolizes more than just a means of travel. It represents freedom, a shared dream, and a life unbound by the conventional. Standing here, amidst fall colors in the Great Smoky Mountains, I feel an overwhelming sense of peace. Deep Creek Campground isn't just a retreat, it's become a part of who I am. Our life together, unconventional as it may be, living out of our Airstream trailer, represents freedom, a shared dream, a testament to a life unbound by the usual paths. Every day is a new adventure, and as I look out at the mountains, I'm grateful for the journey that brought me here. With Bob by my side, I've found a completeness I didn't know I was searching for. This life, our life, is unconventional, but it's ours, and I wouldn't have it any other way. This is my home. Their bond, strengthened by the shared silence and laughter within the compact walls of their airstream, grows deeper with each passing year. Bob, now 78, finds his world increasingly confined to the interior of their mobile home. His health, a declining slope that contrasts sharply with the vibrant landscape outside. Polly, 58, vibrant and full of life, finds solace and strength in the great outdoors, her passion for hiking undimmed by the passing years or her own battles with health issues. Each fall, as the mountains call, Polly and Bob make their trip to the Deep Creek Campground. It's a ritual, an annual journey that Polly treasures above all else. For two decades, this tradition has anchored her, a constant in her life marked by change. The campground, with its community of fellow retirees and nature enthusiasts, becomes a second home, a place where Polly is not just known but cherished. Here, friendships are forged in campfires and conversations under the vast canopy of the stars. The dynamics within this close-knit community are unique. Newcomers are embraced only through a collective nod of approval a testament to the tight bonds formed in this secluded paradise. Polly, with her easy smile and helping hand, is a linchpin in this community, her presence as familiar as the perennial trees surrounding them. With Bob by her side, albeit more in spirit than on hikes, Polly navigates the trails and the complexities of campground relationships with equal ease, her life rich with the threads of nature, love, and communal living. Arriving at Deep Creek Campground in the heart of the Great Smoky Mountains fall splendor, I was immediately struck by the vibrant colors and the sense of community that seemed to permeate the air. I had heard about the close-knit group of retirees and nature lovers who called this place a second home, and I was eager to find my own place among them. It wasn't long before I learned of Polly and Bob Melton, pillars of this community. Polly, with her infectious smile and generous spirit, quickly became a figure of intrigue and admiration for me. She navigated the campground and its relationships with a grace that made her beloved by all. Bob, though less physically present on the trails, was equally a part of the community's heart. His bond with Polly, 
a testament to enduring partnership. As the days passed, I found myself becoming more intertwined with the life here. The welcoming nature of the community, so deeply influenced by Polly's warmth and Bob's quiet strength, offered a sense of belonging I hadn't known I was seeking. Around campfires and under the canopy of stars, I began to weave my own threads into the fabric of this community, discovering a life enriched by nature, companionship, and shared stories. Here, in the embrace of the mountains and the company of newfound friends, I found a home. As 1981 unfolds, the serene beauty of the Smoky Mountains and the predictable rhythm of campground life mask the undercurrents of mystery that swirl quietly beneath the surface. Little does anyone know, this year will etch the name Thelma, Pauline, Polly, Melton into the fabric of unsolved mysteries. Her story, a whisper among the rustling leaves, a shadow in the misty expanse of the mountain that she so dearly loves. On the morning of September 25th, 1981, the dense canopy of the Great Smoky Mountains seemed to hold its breath, a prelude to the day that would etch itself into the memory of the Deep Creek campground. Polly made an uncharacteristic choice that morning. For years, her routine had been as predictable as the sunrise, including her commitment to serving food to local senior citizens, a task that she approached with a blend of duty and delight. Yet, on this day, Polly opted out, setting aside her volunteer apron for reasons that would remain a whisper among the trees. This decision was the first thread of abnormality in what was to unfold as a mystery. Polly instead turned her focus to the mountains that called to her spirit. As she readied herself, her actions seemed no different from any other day destined for the trails, except for the palpable absence of her usual morning destination. Joined by her friends Red and Truella, the trio set off into the heart of the Smoky Mountains. The air was crisp, the path ahead was a familiar friend to Polly, who had traversed these trails countless times before. Laughter and light-hearting teasing flowed easily among them, a testament to the depths of their friendship and the joy they found in each other's company. Polly, usually keeping pace with Red and Truella, inexplicably began to accelerate, her strides growing longer, her pace quickening, until she was a solitary figure on the move ahead. At first I thought it was all in jest, a playful challenge perhaps, but the widening gap between us felt out of character. Polly, wait up. I called, half laughing, half concerned, yet she didn't slow down. My laughter faded into the crisp mountain air, replaced by a growing unease. What prompted this sudden burst of speed? Was Polly simply lost in thought, or was there something more pressing on her mind? As she disappeared from view, a knot formed in my stomach. This wasn't like our Polly, the friend who thrived on our camaraderie, who always made sure we were together, especially in the unpredictable wilderness of the Smokies. I exchanged a look with Truella, both of us masked in confusion and concern. We quickened our pace, hoping to catch up, to return to the comfortable rhythm of our friendship that seemed, in that moment, as distant as Polly herself. The playful banter that had been a constant companion on their hikes fell silent as Polly's form became smaller, eventually disappearing over a crest in the trail. It was a moment suspended in time, when the ordinary act of hiking morphed into the opening scene of a mystery that would haunt the campground. When Red and Truella reached the point where Polly had vanished from their view, they found not their friend, but the empty path, an eerie quiet setting over the forest. Panic, a foreign intruder on their routine hikes, crept into the hearts of Red and Truella. Confusion painted their features as they called out for Polly, their voices swallowed by the vastness of the mountains. The initial search, fueled by a growing sense of urgency, yielded no sign of their friend. The decision to involve the park rangers marked the escalation of the situation from a simple misunderstanding to a full-scale search and rescue operation. The tranquility of Deep Creek Campground was shattered, replaced by the frantic energy of the search teams and the whispered fears of a community suddenly thrust into the unknown. The moment we realized Polly was missing, a cold wave of panic washed over me. Our calls for her, desperate and hopeful, were just absorbed by the vastness of the mountains, leaving us in a suffocating silence. What started as a routine hike spiraled into confusion and fear as Polly remained nowhere to be found. 
we had to get the park rangers involved, marking a grim turn from a mere worry to a serious search operation. The peaceful atmosphere of Deep Creek Campground was shattered, now pulsing with the urgent movements of search teams and the anxious murmurs of our tight-knit community. As darkness fell upon the mountains, the reality of the situation sank in. The Smokies, a place of joy and refuge for Polly, had become the backdrop for our worst fears. Dawn brought no relief, only the intensification of the search as volunteers joined, transforming the landscape into a frenzy of activity. I was struck by the community's outpouring of support, yet beneath the action, a deep unease gnawed at me. The mountains, our sanctuary, now held a mystery that seemed as vast and impenetrable as the forests themselves. With each unanswered call, with every unturned leaf, the weight of Polly's absence grew heavier, turning what should have been an ordinary day into anything but. Despite the collective resolve fueling the search, each effort seemed to dissolve into the mountain air, leaving behind a trail of frustration and unanswered questions. The distinctive pattern of Polly's shoe prints, a potential breadcrumb in the vast wilderness, offered a glimmer of hope, a tangible connection to the woman who had vanished. Search dogs, with their keen senses, were unleashed into the forest, their noses skimming the ground, seeking any scent of Polly. Yet, even their remarkable abilities seemed to falter against the mystery, leading only to dead ends and deepening the sense of perplexity surrounding her disappearance. The campground and the broader community of Bryson City, bound by the shared rhythm of seasonal migrants and the camaraderie of the great outdoors, found themselves united in shock and disbelief. The tight-knit fabric of this community, where newcomers were embraced only through collective agreement, now faced the unthinkable. Conversations around campfires turned somber. The laughter and stories of yesteryears overshadowed by the pervasive question, what happened to Polly? This collective bewilderment and concern underscored the deep connections formed, where Polly was not just a familiar face, but a cherished member of an extended family. As days turned into weeks without any sign of Polly, the void left by her absence became a breeding ground for theories and speculation. Some theorized the possibility of an abduction, despite the lack of any struggle or witnesses. Theories ventured into the wilderness itself, pondering if an animal attack could be responsible, though the absence of any evidence lent little credence to this idea. Others contemplated a more deliberate disappearance, suggesting that Polly, perhaps overwhelmed by secret troubles or a longing for a new beginning, had orchestrated her own vanishing act. Since the call came in about Polly's disappearance from Deep Creek Campground, the case has weighed heavily on me. Bryson City, usually alive with the camaraderie of outdoor enthusiasts, now feels subdued, cloaked in a silence that's hard to shake. Campfire gatherings, once full of laughter and stories, now revolve around a single question. What happened to Polly? In my time as sheriff, I've seen my share of cases, but none have echoed through the community like this. The absence of evidence for theories like abduction or an animal attack only fuels more speculation. Some whisper about the possibility of Polly orchestrating her own disappearance driven by unseen pressures or desires for a new start. With no sign of her, these theories and the collective sense of loss only deepen. Polly was more than a missing person. She was a beloved part of our community fabric. The mystery of her disappearance, set against the backdrop of the Smokies, is a puzzle that's proving difficult to solve. My role demands objectivity and focus on the facts yet I can't help but feel entwined in the community's search for answers and closure. This isn't just another case. It's a quest to restore peace to a community that's lost one of its own. Each theory reflected the desperation and hope of a community grappling with the unknown. Whispers of otherworldly explanations even began to surface, with suggestions of supernatural forces at play in the dense, ancient forests of the Smokies. As the search expanded in scope and scale, the mystery of Polly's disappearance only deepened, casting a long shadow over the Deep Creek campground and the hearts of those who called it home. As the initial shock of Polly Melton's disappearance settled into a persistent, uneasy quiet, attention turned to the fragments of behavior and evidence she left in her wake. The day before she vanished, Polly deviated from her routine in a manner that was both subtle and striking. 
Her decision to make multiple phone calls from a location she seldom used for such purposes painted a picture of premeditation, or perhaps a silent cry for help. These calls, shrouded in mystery due to the lack of traceable records, became a focal point for speculation. Who was on the other end of the line? Was Polly reaching out to someone as part of a plan to start anew? Or were these conversations a lifeline, thrown in a moment of distress? Who was she calling, and why keep it a secret from us, her friends? At night, the quiet of the camp was a reminder of her absence. Those calls, were they a sign we all missed? The idea that she might have been silently struggling, or even planning to leave, was haunting. Polly was the life of our group, it's hard to imagine she had troubles she didn't share. With every day that passed without a trace of her, those phone calls became a puzzle we couldn't solve, a piece of the mystery that kept us awake at night. It's the not knowing that's the worst part, the feeling of having missed the chance to help a friend in need. Further adding to the complexity was Polly's mental state. Known to be a private person, Polly had navigated the loss of her mother with a resilience that masked the depths of her sorrow. Yet, beneath the surface, there were whispers of depression, a battle fought quietly and perhaps not entirely overcome. The disappearance of Bob's volume, a medication not prescribed to Polly but within her reach, suggested a turmoil that went deeper than many realized. Was it a coincidence, or did it hint at a desperate attempt to find solace in oblivion? Six months after Polly stepped into the unknown, a new clue emerged, as baffling as it was unexpected. A check, bearing Polly's name, was cashed in Birmingham, Alabama. This city, a thread woven into the tapestry of Polly's past, suddenly became a beacon for those searching for answers. The signature on the check, a mimicry of Polly's own handwriting, suggested an involvement but fell short of conclusive proof. Was Polly alive, orchestrating her disappearance with a precision that left her loved ones grappling in the dark? Or was someone else manipulating the strands of her story, casting shadows over the truth? The cash check did not have a clear narrative and injected a new layer of complexity into the theories surrounding Polly's fate. It stood as a solitary signpost pointing towards a life that might still be lived, or a ruse crafted to mislead. The implications of this financial transaction rippled through the community, reigniting the embers of hope and suspicion in equal measure. In the search for Polly Melton, every clue seemed to deepen the mystery rather than illuminate the path to understanding. The unusual behaviors, the untraceable phone calls, and the volume that vanished all converged around the cash check, leaving those who sought the truth pondering the mysterious twists of fate that could hide a woman from the world or reveal her secrets to those who dared to look closer. Bob Melton, Polly's husband, found himself adrift in a sea of uncertainty, his health and spirit diminished by the weight of her absence. Friends who had shared trails, laughter, and the simple pleasures of campground life now faced the empty space where Polly once stood, her presence irreplaceably void. The fabric of the community, so tightly knit around shared experiences and mutual affection, frayed at the edges, leaving those within it grappling with a loss that extended beyond the physical. The mystery of what happened to Polly Melton remains a question mark hanging over the Smoky Mountains. The story of her disappearance touched not just those who searched the woods and called her name, but also those who hear her story and felt the chill of the unresolved fate. The emotional toll exacted by Polly's vanishing was not measured in days of searching or miles traversed, but in the quiet moments of reflection, the birthdays and anniversaries that passed without her and the haunting realization that some questions may remain forever unanswered. The legacy of Polly's disappearance is a story of love, loss, and the relentless pursuit of truth. If you have any information, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant, you are urged to come forward. In the quest for answers, every piece of the puzzle is crucial. It is through this collective effort that we may yet find the closure so deeply sought, not just for Polly's sake, but for those all touched by her story. Enthusiasts alike, the disappearances of Frederick Fritz Drum and Thomas Messick Sr. 
These stories, set against the backdrop of the enigmatic wilderness of upstate New York, converge in a narrative that challenges our understanding of the natural world. As we unravel the layers of these mysterious cases, we invite you to join us on this journey through the unknown. If you're captivated by these intriguing stories and want to stay updated with more mysteries from around the universe, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our latest explorations into the unexplained. And for those who are particularly moved by these mysteries and wish to support the channel further, consider using the Super Chat feature. Your contributions help us delve deeper into these mysteries and bring even more fascinating content to you. Every bit of support fuels our journey into the mysterious and the unknown. So let's embark on this adventure together and uncover the secrets that await us. In the vast, untamed wilderness of upstate New York, where nature's beauty intertwines with the unknown, lie two stories, both profoundly mysterious and eerily similar. These are the tales of Frederick Fritz Drum and Thomas Messick Sr., two men whose disappearances from familiar terrains defy easy explanation and challenge our understanding of the natural world. Their stories, seemingly separate, converge in a narrative that is as baffling as it is intriguing, set against the backdrop of a region steeped in enigma and mystery. The parallels between the two cases are striking and unsettling. Both men were experienced in outdoor survival, well acquainted with their surroundings, and held in high regard by their respective communities. Their sudden and unexplained vanishings from areas they knew well add a perplexing layer to their stories. The lack of any evidence or clues in such thoroughly searched areas deepen the mystery. What's more, these disappearances occurred in a region that borders the infamous Bennington Triangle, an area notorious for a series of unexplained vanishings. This geographical connection weaves a thread of intrigue and speculation, suggesting a possible link to the larger mysteries of the Triangle and the puzzles that are often associated with it. As we delve into these two stories, we are drawn into a world where the line between the known and unknown is blurred. Their tales are not just isolated incidents, they are a part of a larger, more complex puzzle that challenges our perception of reality and the mysteries that lie hidden in the wilderness. Through the convergence of these two stories, we embark on a journey to explore the depths of these mysteries, seeking answers that remain just out of reach. It was a crisp November morning in 2015 when 82-year-old Thomas Messick Sr., an adept and respected woodsman, ventured into the dense forests of Horicon, New York, near Bryant Lake. This area, cloaked in the rich hues of autumn, was familiar territory for Thomas, who had spent countless seasons navigating its rugged terrain. His planned activity was deer hunting, a ritual he had engaged in annually with a blend of passion and expertise. Yet this year, the forest held a different fate for him, one shrouded in mystery and unanswered questions. Thomas wasn't just an ordinary hunter. His profound knowledge of the wilderness was augmented by years of experience, making him more than adept at navigating and surviving in the wild. His wisdom in these areas was not only practiced, but also taught to others, showcasing his deep understanding of forest survival. On that fateful day, Thomas was part of a group of seven, a mix of friends and family, all united by their love for hunting. They congregated near Lily Pond, a tranquil body of water that served as their chosen hunting ground. Their strategy was a classic deer drive, a technique requiring coordination and teamwork. The group was divided into two, the drivers, tasked with stirring the deer from their hiding spots, and the watchers, positioned strategically to capitalize on the fleeing game. Thomas, along with three elder members of the party, assumed the role of the watchers. They positioned themselves in a linear formation, maintaining a distance of less than 100 yards from each other. This careful positioning was meant to ensure visibility and communication within the group, an essential aspect of the hunt. As the day progressed, the drivers moved through the forest, pushing the deer towards the watchers. However, they were met with an eerie silence, an unusual stillness that seemed to have engulfed the forest. 
The natural chorus of wildlife sounds was conspicuously absent, creating an unsettling atmosphere. Upon reaching the location where Thomas was supposed to be, a wave of confusion and concern washed over the group. Thomas was nowhere in sight. His absence was alarming, especially considering his extensive background in wilderness survival. The immediate vicinity offered no clues. His rifle and walkie-talkie, essential tools for communication and protection, were missing as well. The group initiated a search, scouring the area for any sign of Thomas, but to no avail. As the daylight waned, they contacted the forest rangers, sparking the beginning of a large-scale search operation. The operation stretched into the evening, with part of the group staying behind overnight to make noise in hopes of guiding Thomas back. The search for Thomas Messick Sr. quickly escalated into an extensive and thorough operation. Starting the next day, a team of 13 trained rescue professionals from the Park Service joined the effort. This was only the beginning of a search that would grow to involve over 300 individuals, including professionals and volunteers. They were equipped with an arsenal of search tools, dogs, divers, helicopters, all scouring an area spanning over four square miles. Even with such an extensive effort, no evidence or trace of Thomas was uncovered. The involvement of the FBI's critical incident response group in the search added an element of intrigue. The FBI's presence was unusual, given their standard protocols for missing person cases. Their secretive approach and lack of transparent communication fueled speculation and rumors about the nature of their interest in this case. As days turned into weeks, the mystery only deepened. The lack of any trace of Thomas, coupled with his survival skills, and the proximity of his last known location to the rest of the group made his disappearance all the more perplexing. The area was extensively combed, yet it seemed as if Thomas had just vanished into thin air. Theories were proposed, yet none provided a satisfactory explanation. Was it a sudden medical emergency, an unexpected encounter with wildlife, or something more sinister? The absence of any distress signal, especially considering Thomas's access to a walkie-talkie, only added to the complexity of the case. The puzzle of Thomas Messick Sr.'s disappearance remains unsolved to this day. The forest that was once his hunting ground has become the setting of a profound mystery, one that continues to captivate and baffle. Despite the passage of time, questions linger. What happened to Thomas on that November day? Why did he leave his post? And where could he have ventured off to? The lack of evidence, the thoroughness of the search, and Thomas's expertise in the wilderness combined to create a narrative that is as confounding as it is intriguing. His story stands as a testament to the unpredictable nature of the wild and the mysteries that it still holds. In the tranquil expanse of Schulerville, New York, a small town known for its beauty and proximity to the notorious Bennington Triangle, the unexplained disappearance of 68-year-old Frederick Fritz Drum on November 24, 2015, casts a long, unsettling shadow. This mystery, entwined with the similar, perplexing case of Thomas Messick Sr., forms a tapestry of unanswered questions and eerie coincidences. Frederick Drum, a man deeply rooted in his community, lived with his wife Ruth on a vast 178-acre farm. Their life there was idyllic, set against the backdrop of upstate New York's rolling hills and landscapes. Fritz, an accomplished hunter and lover of the outdoors, had adapted well to the region's harsh winters. He spent his retirement days exploring the property, observing wildlife, and tracking animals along the creek that meandered through their land. His mental faculties were sharp, with no indications of dementia or cognitive decline. Fritz's contributions to his community extended beyond his love for nature. For 14 years, he had served diligently on Schulerville's city council. His decisions were fair, and he was both liked and respected a testament to his character and integrity. On the day Fritz vanished, it began like any other. He and Ruth shared a morning coffee, a ritual embodying the simplicity and comfort of their long-shared life. Ruth left for a grandparent's breakfast at 10 a.m., while Fritz preferred the solace of their farm. 
When she returned at 2 p.m., the barn was empty and Fritz was nowhere to be found. His belongings, including his cell phone and car keys, were inside the house, suggesting that he hadn't gone far. As darkness fell upon the farm and Fritz did not return, Ruth's concern turned into alarm. By the next morning, with Fritz still missing, she reported his disappearance, igniting a large-scale search. The Saratoga County Sheriff's Department, alongside over 200 volunteers, search and rescue teams, helicopters, and canine units embarked on an exhaustive search. They combed through the drum property and expanded their efforts to an astounding 1,200 acres surrounding the area. Despite this extensive and thorough search, no evidence of Fritz's whereabouts emerged. It was as if he had vanished into the ether, leaving behind a baffling mystery that echoed the strange disappearance of Thomas Messick Sr., who had vanished under similarly mysterious circumstances in the same region just one year before. The proximity of these two cases, both geographically and culturally, paints a picture of a region shrouded in mystery. Schulerville's closeness to the Bennington Triangle, an area notorious for unexplained disappearances, only deepens this intrigue. Some speculate there might be a connection between these disappearances and the mysterious forces often attributed to the Triangle. The shared characteristics of Fritz's and Thomas's case are striking. Both were experienced outdoorsmen, well respected in their communities, with no known reasons to vanish voluntarily. Their disappearances from locations where they were familiar and comfortable, without any trace, challenges, logical explanations. The involvement of extensive search teams, the use of modern technology, and the lack of any clues or evidence add layers of complexity to this case. The absence of any signs of a struggle, foul play, or intention to leave raises more questions than answers. The region's wilderness, while beautiful, holds secrets that seem beyond the grasp of those who seek to uncover them. Since the years of their disappearances have passed, their stories remain open chapters in unexplained mysteries. Families, communities, and investigators continue to grapple with the unknown, holding onto the hope that someday, some light may be shed on these perplexing cases. The disappearances of Frederick Fritz Drum and Thomas Messick Sr. stands as reminders of the profound mysteries that lie within the natural world, silent and yet to be unraveled. As we reach the end of our exploration into these puzzling disappearances, we are left with more questions than answers. These cases, unfolding in the vast wilderness of upstate New York, serve as reminders of the mysteries that still elude our understanding. Despite extensive searches and the passage of time, the fates of Fritz and Thomas remain shrouded in mystery, their stories a testament to the unpredictability and profound mysteries of nature. As we continue to ponder their disappearances, these cases remind us of the fragility of our existence against the backdrop of the natural world. They stand as enduring mysteries, captivating and confounding us, and reminding us that some secrets of the universe are perhaps destined to remain unsolved. In the realm of the unknown, the stories of Fritz and Thomas will continue to intrigue and haunt us, echoing through the forests of the unsolved mysteries. Welcome back to a universe of mystery. Today, we delve into a captivating mystery surrounding British actor Julian Sands, an avid hiker and lover of the outdoors. It all started on a fateful Friday evening in the breathtaking Mount Baldy area, a rugged and challenging terrain, especially during winter conditions. Reported missing on January 13th, 2023, by his wife at the age of 65, Julian Sands embarked on a solo hiking adventure heading towards the perilous Mount Baldy. The news of his disappearance sent the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Air Operation crews into action, tirelessly scouring the mountain as weather conditions permitted. His car was found at the Manker Flats trailhead area, adding to the puzzling nature of the case. For those unfamiliar with Julian Sands, he is renowned for his appearances in a variety of films, including classics like Room with a View, Arachnophobia, and Warlock. He has even portrayed diverse roles in television shows like 24, Smallville, and Banshee. As the search for Julian continued, the mountain itself has proven to be treacherous. 
with 14 rescue missions being undertaken by sheriff's officials, unfortunately resulting in loss of lives, including 56-year-old Crystal Gonzalez Landis, a devoted hiker and mother of four, who tragically slid down Mount Baldy over 500 feet. Despite the risks and warnings, the allure of the outdoors still calls to adventurous souls. In the midst of this baffling disappearance, the San Gabriel Mountains have also been the focus of search efforts for the 61-year-old body of Bob Gregory of Hawthorne, California, yet another hiker who vanished without a trace. Now let's dive deeper into Julian Sands' illustrious career. Born on January 4, 1958, Julian's acting journey began in the early 80s and persisted until the very day that he vanished. His talent shone brightly in movies like The Killing Fields, Boxing Awena, Leaving Las Vegas, and A Room with a View. More recently, he was involved in Project Seneca, a film centered around the creation of earthquakes. Julian Sands' disappearance has garnered international attention with close friends like John Malkovich publicly expressing their concern and grief. The question lingers in everyone's mind, what could have happened to Julian Sands? Was it an unforeseen accident or something more enigmatic? As we explore the circumstances leading up to his disappearance, we must remain cautious, especially when venturing into challenging terrains like Mount Baldy, where nature can be both beautiful and unforgiving. Join us as we dive into this captivating case, analyzing every aspect of Julian Sands' life, his love for the outdoors, and what may have compelled him to take on the majestic Mount Baldy. So grab your hiking gear and let's embark on this captivating journey together. Julian Sands, a man who truly embraced the great outdoors and physical activity. For Julian, hiking was not just a hobby, it was a way to hit the reset button and find balance amid the demands of his profession. In his own words, he declared, I'm happiest being close to the mountain summit on a glorious cold morning. But what made this particular morning different from the rest? Before delving deeper into Julian's disappearance, let's first explore the majestic Mount Baldy and the San Bernardino mountain area. Gaining an understanding of the challenges both Julian and the search and rescue teams faced. Mount Baldy, Though a popular destination for outdoor enthusiasts has a dark and unfortunate past, having claimed the lives of many hikers over the years. News reports have often highlighted the dangers of this mountain, and Julian is not the first to vanish without a trace. Unfortunately, others before him have met similar fates, some found deceased with injuries ranging from falls to exposure, while others have never been located or ever seen again. Situated in the San Gabriel Mountains of San Bernardino County, California, Mount Baldy is surrounded by a picturesque national forest. The area boasts a rich history dating back a century, with various tales to be told, but we will focus on the key elements of the Julian Sands case for now. The climate on Mount Baldy exhibits extremes, with temperatures plummeting to negative 10 degrees during cooler months and soaring close to 100 degrees in the warmer ones. Annual snowfall ranges between 50 to 60 inches, accompanied by frequent precipitation. Despite its challenges, Mount Baldy remains open year-round and attracts thousands of visitors each season. The mountain offers a range of hikes to suit diverse preferences and skills. Among the popular trails are the 10-mile Bridge to Nowhere and East Fork Trail, the 1.5-mile San Antonio Falls Trail, the 11-mile Mount Baldy Notch Trail, and the 12-mile Icehouse Canyon to the Cucamonga Peak Trail, to name just a few. These hikes vary in difficulty, from easy strolls to advanced treks, appealing to hikers of all types. While the specific trail Sands chose is not mentioned in the search and rescue details, it is likely he opted for the Mount Baldy Summit Trail. This trail, considered the easiest route to the peak at an impressive 10,069 feet in elevation, starts at the top of Notch Restaurant and follows the Devil's Backbone, spanning approximately seven miles round trip with an elevation gain of 2,200 feet. Alternatively, some hikers opt for the service road from the ski area parking lot to the top of Notch Restaurant, a shorter six-mile option with a more strenuous elevation gain of 3,500 feet. Reaching the summit offers a breathtaking reward, a vast, flat, 
and treeless panoramic view of Southern California's cities, deserts, mountains, and oceans, which aptly earns the mountain its name, Mount Baldy. Given Julian's adventurous spirit, he may have taken a more challenging route to the summit, but specific details to support this theory remain elusive. The search and rescue effort focused on the location where he was last seen, leaving us wondering what they had to say about the circumstances of his disappearance. Let's delve deeper into the surrounding geography, as it plays a crucial role in understanding the challenges Julian faced. The vast Angeles National Forest, spanning approximately 700,000 acres, engulfs the San Gabriel and the Sierra Polona Mountains. Established in 1908, this national forest primarily lies within LA County, with a small portion extending into southwestern San Bernardino County. With this expanse, one can find several nationally designated wilderness areas, each with its unique charm. The Cucamonga Wilderness, the Magic Mountain Wilderness, Pleasant View Ridge Wilderness, the San Gabriel Wilderness, and Sheep Mountains Wilderness. With so much wilderness to explore, one can easily see how it can be easy to get lost in this vast and beautiful landscape. A significant factor in Julian's case was the weather. As mentioned earlier, the conditions in January were far from favorable. The winter season in the area can be harsh, with powerful storms battering the region one after the other, bringing severe winter weather. Unfortunately, it so happened that Julian entered the park during one of the most challenging times of the year making the search effort even more complicated. The search effort was massive and involved the collaboration of hundreds of professional search and rescue personnel from various agencies, making it one of the largest search operations in modern times. Agencies like the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department, Fontana Sheriff Station, West Valley Search and Rescue Division, the California Highway Patrol, local and state law enforcement, and park officials all came together to coordinate the first round of searches. Initially, the focus was on the Mount Baldy area, but as time went on, the search zone expanded to include surrounding trails and wilderness areas within the Angeles National Forest. Searchers attempted to narrow down their efforts by focusing on a specific area of the trail where the California Highway Patrol's RICO device indicated a possible electronic signal during the early days of the investigation. Julian's silver Volvo was found at the trailhead, covered in a thin layer of snow, suggesting that it had been sitting untouched for several days by that point. However, there were no clues inside the vehicle to indicate what might have happened to Julian and everything appeared to be in order. Despite the dedication and the use of technology, such as canines, helicopters, drones with FLIR technology, the search efforts were continuously hampered by relentless winter storms, forcing operations to halt for days at a time. On February 25th, a month after Julian's disappearance, the search effort was scaled back due to lack of leads, limited resources, and the persistent winter weather. The heartbreaking realization that the effort had to shift from a rescue to a recovery operation weighed heavily on everyone involved, including Julian's friends and family, who were holding on to hope for his safe return. Regrettably, Julian's case is not an isolated incident. Over the years, since 2020, more than 100 search operations have been conducted for missing hikers on Mount Baldy, resulting in six confirmed fatalities as of February 2023. This somber statistic paints an even darker picture of the treacherous winter conditions that plague the mountain at the start of each new year. As we continue our exploration, we must now consider the possibilities of what occurred in the vast wilderness of Mount Baldy during those winter days. The challenges posed by the environment and the history of previous missing hikers serves as a reminder of the perils that can befall even the most experienced adventurers in this breathtaking yet unforgivable landscape. Let us proceed with caution and empathy as we seek to uncover the truth behind Julian Sands' enigmatic disappearance amidst the stunning but unpredictable wilderness of Mount Baldy. According to the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department, Julian was one of three hikers who went missing in the Mount Baldy area during the month of January. Jin Chung, a 75-year-old man from North Hollywood, was reported missing on Sunday, January 22nd, after his hike at Mount Baldy. 
Fortunately, he was found safe a few days later, although he did suffer from some weather-related injuries. On January 18th, another hiker, 61-year-old Robert Gregory from Hawthorne, California went missing after failing to return home from his hike near Mount Islip, located in the Angeles National Forest. Sadly, Mr. Gregory's body was discovered exactly one month later, on February 18th, approximately 300 feet below the summit of Mount Islip. Even for the experienced outdoor enthusiast, Mount Baldy can prove to be treacherous and yield disastrous results if not properly prepared. The dangers that lurk on the mountain should serve as a stern reminder of the importance of adequate preparation and caution. Unfortunately, despite these dangers, the allure of the outdoors and the spirit of adventure will likely continue to draw people to explore the wilderness. One possible scenario that comes to mind about Julian Sands' disappearance, albeit an unfortunate one, is the kind we fear but anticipate given the history of accidents on Mount Baldy. It is not difficult to imagine a similar scenario playing out for Julian, as it takes just one wrong move or being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Julian could have suffered a fall, leaving him trapped or incapacitated. The weather on January 13th did not offer much forgiveness, with temperatures ranging from the upper 40s during the day to freezing at night, accompanied by high winds, sleet, and snow. Hypothermia from exposure could have been a significant risk, but if that were the case, why were the searchers unable to find him? In such situations, when a person becomes injured or exposed to the elements, they often get disoriented, losing their sense of direction. Lost hikers can end up in areas that seem to defy logic, straying completely off course from their intended routes. Dehydration sets in over time, leading individuals to make poor decisions out of desperation, much like those lost at sea who may drink seawater or attempt to reach an imaginary island caused by a mirage. In the wilderness, a similar phenomenon can occur in an emergency situation, with people wandering into oblivion, eventually being swallowed up by the unforgiving wilderness. Although animal predation is possible, there is no evidence to suggest that it played a role in Julian's disappearance. Mount Baldy is not excessively tall, and predators like mountain lions are more likely to be seen in lower elevations during colder months in search of food. Nonetheless, the rugged environment of Mount Baldy poses enough natural dangers, and Julian's case serves as a stark reminder of the importance of preparation and respect for nature's unpredictability. Another less explored scenario revolves around the potential of foul play. While it may seem far-fetched, we have all heard the disturbing stories of obsessed fans fixated on their favorite celebrities. Although Julian's disappearance might not have been linked to such a scenario, we cannot dismiss the possibility of encountering individuals with sinister intentions in remote areas. Alternatively, it could have been a simple exchange gone awry, or Julian might have unintentionally angered someone else on the trail. In the past, unfortunate accidents have occurred due to carelessness, as seen in the 2007 incident where a hiker's life was lost due to rocks tossed carelessly down a mountain, oblivious to those below. Delving into Julian's personal life, it is worth considering whether he might have been experiencing deeper personal struggles that were unknown to the public. Although he enjoyed a successful acting career, could he have felt stagnant or unfulfilled? The stresses of an ever-changing industry might have led him to seek solace in the outdoors, as he often did to balance his professional life. Nonetheless, such feelings can pass with time, but for some, they may prove overwhelming. At times, the allure of escape can be strangely appealing, but I don't imply that Julian had any desire to disappear. We can't ignore the possibility as we've seen in other cases where individuals sought such an escape. While I personally do not believe this scenario in Julian's case, it is essential to explore every angle to uncover the truth. The events leading up to his disappearance remain a mystery, making it difficult to determine exactly what transpired on that day. However, something tells me that the answers we seek may not be too far away, and perhaps once found, we'll realize the clues were right in front of us all along. Intriguingly, overconfidence could be a factor worth considering. Oftentimes, we hear stories of experienced outdoor enthusiasts who, despite their familiarity with the area, bite off more than they can chew. 
positive experiences on previous trips may not guarantee the same outcome on subsequent ones. Hence, it is essential to remain vigilant and prepared, even in familiar territories. In the case of Julian's disappearance, we cannot help but feel that this case is shrouded in uncertainty, much like the enigmatic persona of Julian himself. Apart from the myriad roles he portrayed in the illustrious career that he had, Julian was captivating in his own right. Many were drawn to his charisma, wisdom, kindness, and friendship. Yet, despite his admirable qualities, Julian remained somewhat of a mystery, concealing aspects of himself from the world. On June 24, 2023, the news of Julian Sands' tragic end has deeply saddened the world. A body discovered in the wilderness near Mount Baldy, California, has now been officially confirmed to be that of the missing British actor. After transporting the body to the coroner's office for identification, the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department released a statement stating that the body had been positively identified as Julian Sands, the 65-year-old actor. The search for Julian Sands had been a coordinated effort by the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department with Mount Baldy's challenging terrain in the San Gabriel Mountains, providing to be a formidable obstacle for rescuers. The inclement weather hampered the ground searches, causing delays and difficulty in finding Sands. Despite the effort of over 80 people in a renewed search on the 17th of June, they were unable to locate him. Consequently, the sheriff's office made the difficult decision to scale back the search. Julian Sands' family, in their first statement in four months, expressed their profound gratitude to the search teams and spoke of their enduring love for the actor, remembering him as a wonderful father, husband, explorer, and lover of the natural wonder and of the arts. John Malkovich, a close friend of Julian Sands for four decades since they met on the set of The Killing Fields in 1983, paid a heartfelt tribute to him. As their film Seneca on the creation of earthquakes premiered at the Berlin Film Festival in February, Malkovich expressed his deep affection for Sands and the tremendous loss felt by all who knew him. He described Sands as exceptionally clever and an exceptional storyteller, adding that their friendship allowed them to talk about anything with each other. Julian Sands was not only known for his talent and versatility as an actor, but also cherished for his engaging personality, sense of humor, and ability to connect with others. As the world mourns the loss of this exceptional individual, we remember him for the impact he left on the lives of those who were fortunate enough to know him. May his memory live on, and may he continue to inspire us through his contributions to the arts and the enduring connections he forged with his loved ones and friends. If you've enjoyed this content from a universe of mystery, please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my new and upcoming content.